my microphone was not on ha <laughs> let's start that over uh welcome everybody to the same report it has been another crazy week actually shit i think that might have been echoing <laughs> wow all right we're, we're uh 10 out of 10 on the stream as kevin points out i am kicking this one off for the third time welcome everybody to the sam's report hopefully there's no echoes and there's no and now you can hear me uh i jumped right in and forgot to unmute um everything and then i forgot to mute certain things there's a lot of things you gotta really do you really gotta do to really get this stuff and i don't think people ever really appreciate it unless you've been on the podcasting side but what happens is when i play the intro video i have to enable audio and then when the video ends, I have to mute audio. Otherwise, there's an echo. And then I have to unmute the microphone. And I got about 50% of the way there. So uh, good job, me. But this has been a crazy week in the world of Microsoft because there's been like a lot of ups and downs and highs and lows. Uh, and I say we just dive right in because let's let's kick it off here. So Microsoft announced a well an event. I almost called it a Surface event for May 2nd. And so... Um, to, depending on what you saw around the internet, some people were writing it up as exclusively reporting that there's going to be no Surface Pros there. That, I don't know if I can really say it, but um, that stuff's not going to be there. That's not an exclusive. Everybody was told that, that there's going to be no Surface Pro stuff there. Um, so no Surface Pro refresh. We're not expecting a Surface Book 2. Uh, this is an education-focused event. And so this is, this is a little bit of a tease, I think, because a lot of people we've been sitting on, and I'm fully like aware of how why people were so excited because we've been sitting on this horizon we know that the surface pro 4 um is a little bit dated we know that the surface book 2 is a little bit dated and then microsoft blasts out these invites for an event and it's in new york city which is where they always do their hardware events so we're like oh god great you know this is happening and then it's like ah no no microsoft's like no 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 this isn't a surface pro event um, and so I did some poking around and I know I just said some of this stuff's like scooping, but when I, when I start poking around it, that's usually, uh, I'm just trying to get some clarification about things. And so, uh, internally at Microsoft, they think of, and this, this is not crazy. They think of the surface book and the surface pro as pro devices. And so when this thing came out as an education event, it doesn't really make sense to announce pro devices at an education event. Now I do believe there is going to be hardware at this event. Um, and so kind of working through the checklist of things we know Microsoft is working on, we know that they've got ARM, uh, they've got Windows Cloud, which they haven't announced yet. So uh, you kind of toss these things together and Windows Cloud, for those who aren't completely familiar with it, it's, it's really a version of Windows 10 that only runs UWP applications. Now it can run on Intel and it can run on ARM, but the big difference here is that with these devices for an undetermined amount of fee, at least we've uncovered, that you can actually unlock Windows Cloud and it becomes proper Windows 10. I'm guessing Windows 10 Home. I don't know if, or maybe it's Pro, it might be Pro at that point. But uh, yeah, so basically it's not, it's Windows RT, but it's really not because it's, it, it, the problem with Windows RT is that it was, well, it was pitched very badly. It had a bad name um, and all that stuff. And we don't know if Windows Cloud is the final name. I kind of hope not because there's not a whole lot of cloud things related to this <laughs> other than maybe like your MSA account and it can sync things, but it's not really cloud like Microsoft. Uh, and anyways, so this is an education event and we know Windows Cloud is going to lower the cost of entry for Windows. And so what it seems to make sense, and Mary Jo came up with this, so I, I got to give her credit for just the name. And uh, I think, I believe she told me that this was an insider information. She was just putting stuff together. It's like, what if they're building a new line of products called Cloud Books? And so there's Chromebooks, right? Which are really low price educational things. Um, not always educational, but you know what I mean. And so maybe Microsoft's coming out with things called Cloud Books, which is going to be, again, a lower end version of Windows, um, lower end hardware. But you got to remember, lower end hardware today is not like lower end hardware of 2007 when netbooks came out. Like a, an Intel Atom chip these days, it's good enough, right? If you go back to 2007 with the netbooks, an Intel Atom chip in 2007 couldn't even stream a 1080p video, and it really struggled on a 720p video. And so we're, we're well beyond those days. So a low end Intel chip these days is a pretty capable thing. And also at the same time, a high end Snapdragon chip like the 835, we know is a pretty capable chip too. So um, I, I think we're finally hitting like that, that marriage of like Intel's low chips being good enough and ARM chip, high end ARM chips being good enough for, you know, the basic compute and educational tasks. And so I think that's what we're going to see here. And I think we're going to see hardware and I think we're going to see Microsoft show off some of this stuff and about the new direction of that. 
And the question is, will it work? I, uh, I don't know. Um, I, I fully get why a cloud book and I, I get why Chromebooks make sense, right? Too, especially in education market because people can't screw around. I get why cloud books, I, I get the, the desire of these things. The question is, is can Microsoft take back the market share that Chromebooks or even Apple has taken with potentially iPads? Because you got to remember if they're already running Windows at an elementary school or whatever, like Microsoft's not going to gain new market share. Uh, they might with this new product to be able to sustain market share but what they really want to do is be able to cut off chromebook that penetration from chromebook so this is i'm guessing their strategy for going after that segment and that is what this event is about and yikes that's not what most of us were thinking it was going to be um but kumbaya here we are with a microsoft education event may 2nd the other thing that's really kind of nuts about this uh this is pretty i think unprecedented in the world of microsoft is that okay so the events on tuesday uh the following week is build so this event must be large enough or differentiated enough from build that they said you know what we're not going to bundle this stuff together and so we feel that it's they feel that brad needs to get on a plane twice for that oh so we have this surface or this education event we have build and that's that's not all, folks. Um, I'm still poking around on this. I'm not willing to write this up. Please uh, do not write this up either. But th there's still I'm still hearing things that there might be another event from Microsoft that they haven't announced yet that's more Surface related, like the Surface Pro. Uh, I don't know if Surface Book Two is in that, but um, and the the size of that event, I don't have. I don't know. It might just the details I, I'm telling you, I heard this from one individual who has an okay track record. Um, he, he said they're, they're still, they're not giving up on surface pro and that stuff. They said there's still something coming this spring. Um, he did provide a couple of dates and I'm not going to, I'm not going to say those yet. Cause I don't, I don't have enough confidence in them yet. And I don't know if that's just an announcement date. I mean, I could very much see them with a surface pro refresh. If that's all they're doing, not having an event that wouldn't be unprecedented when Microsoft announced the surface three, uh, they did not have an event, not the Pro 3, but the actual Surface 3, they didn't have an event. So the Surface Pro refresh is is close to like getting out of the gate. Um, and so I don't, I don't know if they're going to do an event for it or not, but they're noodling around with this stuff. So it's like, holy crap, Microsoft, are you really going to have this uh, education event and you're going to build? And then are they really going to have another Surface event? Are they going to do it quietly? But it's this stuff isn't going away. And those details are starting to come into play. So I, I'm really, really curious to see what they're going to be doing with this. Uh, the other thing too is, is the surface or this, I keep on a surface event. I gotta, I gotta get that off my tongue. This education event, I was originally thinking that says, Hey, they're going to show off Redstone three there, but nah, I don't think that's going to be the case now. I think that's going to be more of windows cloud focused. I think it's going to be very similar to what we saw at the October event where they came out and announced the creators update. But in this place, they're going to come out and announce windows cloud. And then they're going to come out and announce some hardware that works with Windows Cloud, and that's it. Hopefully they don't spend 45 minutes on stage or 30 minutes on stage talking about Paint 3D, which I don't think is being very well received. Uh, not many people are using it a whole lot, at least from what I can see from an external perspective. We'll see once uh, the Creators Update gets a little bit more out there about how that goes. But, yeah, this I, I suspect the Surface Refresh stuff is going to leak. Uh, that's kind of my hunch at this point. But anyways, uh, so then in two weeks, we have uh, or a week after the event, we have built, which I'm hearing is going to be very much Redstone 3 focused. That's not a big surprise. Microsoft still has to kind of rally the troops around Redstone. Um, I, I'm going to say this five times before build. I, I, I'm watching very carefully to see what their UWP story is, uh, their universal Windows platform apps. How what what's they're going to be? What's their pitch this year? How are they going to get people to actually start building really big and powerful apps inside of there? Are they going to give them more API access? Are they going to give them more features? Um, I I quote you can quote me on this. If Microsoft doesn't mention UWP that much and just comes out and says, we have great momentum in UWP, that means that they're evaluating if they're going to kill it. Uh, just, I will write up that post if that's Microsoft's strategy for build. They say we have great momentum in UWP and that's all they really say. Because to me that says, hey, we're not investing any more money into UWP. We're just in a sit and watch thing, which is the first thing they've done, first time they've done that really since the launch of like Windows 8 
the, the store of Windows 8. They've been giving us bridges. They've been giving us new features. They've been giving us uh, additional capabilities. And if they come out this year and say, nope, no, not this year, um, that will be very interesting because they can't just do all cloud stuff, even though that's where their growth sector is. Their growth is in cloud and in Office 365 and in security services. That's that's where Microsoft's uh, growing money. Windows is, they still make money. I mean, don't get me wrong. They still make good money in Windows, but they don't, it's not like growing explosively like it was, say, in the mid 90s or late 90s. So um, build is going to be very, very interesting this year. I'll be curious to see what they do about bots. Remember, bots was a huge thing last year, and it's like, like <laughs> these bots are still there. Uh, bot framework is out. I don't know. I'm not personally a big fan of bots. I've, I don't know. I, I just haven't found one that really works. I get it. I understand where bots are going. Um, it's going to be a very long road to get there, but uh, we'll see what happens with bots. That's that's bots. Speaking of other events, Microsoft also announced, hey, there's going to be an E3 Scorpio event. Surprise! Nobody's surprised by that. Microsoft, uh, they felt the need to come out and actually say this, and they announced it, and they sent out invites. It's for Sunday, June 11th from 2 to 3.30 Pacific time. Uh, this is right before E3. And this is where they're going to announce Scorpio and talk all about it and blah, blah, blah. I don't, uh, this shouldn't be a surprise, but again, this is just another event. So Microsoft has confirmed two events in May and one in June. Wowzers. That's a, that's a lot of stuff. That's a lot of stuff in a pretty short period of time. This is, I've been saying for a while, this is an exciting time in Microsoft's world. Um, things are really starting to materialize and get published and getting hard dates on this stuff. So we got Scorpio, we got Build, and we've got this May event. Maybe something a little other else. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, crazy time. Crazy, crazy time. So we got some more on Redstone here coming up in a minute. Uh, Edge came out, so Edge, Microsoft's beloved browser used by very few people. Um, I'm going to get some nasty grams about that. But uh, Edge, we, we know it's not used nearly as much as Chrome, but Edge is still, you know, battering along. They came out with a new report this week, uh, Battery Life Testing, and says that Edge is still reign supreme, and Battery Life gets 90 minutes longer than Chrome when running a full-screen video. I mean, that's, that's real-world stuff. Like, if you're on an airplane and you're watching a video... Uh, actually i think about that you wouldn't be streaming it but uh, if you're unplugged and streaming a video edge clearly is the browser to be using um that's not really disputed right now so you know edge is slowly getting there i still wish it was serviced through the store so they could update it faster and that they had they acted like their butt was on fire and released things a little bit faster but i know that they're working as quick as they can and uh the creators update added some good stuff i will give them credit for that and it is coming around edge is getting there the problem is is it is it happening quick enough um is edge going to materialize quick enough or is it chrome just going to continue to eat away and i, I don't know i don't I, I don't know edge is um in an interesting place microsoft has a good foundation of technology there but it's uh it, it's if if they've if microsoft has moved to rapid release for windows edge needs to be on um warp speed release like we're talking like every four weeks just adding a feature they could they need to figure that out that servicing model but they're handicapped by it not being able to be serviced through the windows store i don't understand microsoft other cool things that are coming or that were announced this week uh if you use xbox one or windows 10 apps i believe it's windows 10 apps yeah or from the windows store i should say microsoft's now allowing refunds up to two weeks so if you buy something you play it, you're like meh uh you can now return it like that's awesome that that's really nice actually two weeks seems long uh but there's also stipulation i think you can only be have played the game for two hours because it, clearly in a two-week time period some people could play an entire game and then just try to return it so if you play it for i think over two hours i gotta double check on that then you can no longer return it so keep that in mind if you buy something you don't like there you go other things happened this week uh vista is dead you know we salute you vista uh you never had a good chance you were botched from the beginning. You were botched halfway through when they reset your code base or your code strategy stuff. And there you go. Uh, this is dead. But the creators updates here. So Microsoft has started rolling out the creators update. Again, no big surprise here. They're doing exactly what they told us they would do. Uh, just be keep in mind that, hey, uh, it, it's going to roll out in waves. It's going to take time to get to your machine. 
especially if you have uh, the more complex your machine and the more unique your machine is, the longer I honestly think it's going to take. I bet that they start with really vanilla devices and then they slowly roll it out from there. They told us many times that they're trying to avoid the issues that they have with the create or the anniversary update where it killed webcams. Um, and there you go. So creators update is now officially rolling out. If you want to, you can go grab the ISOs or use the update tools and actually get it today. I'm going to let it sit and marinate. I'm curious to see how long it takes this machine that I'm podcasting from to receive the update. So uh, a couple things about RS3 here. Uh, I've, I've been sitting on this for a little bit and so I'm going to just talk about it now because somebody it started getting written up. Written up. Microsoft is going to bring tabs to Windows 10. Uh, they're, they're trying to with Redstone 3. It's a tab shell. Think of it this way. They want to bring the browser experience that they have today in Edge, Chrome, or whatever, and bring it to things like File Explorer, UWP apps, everywhere across the OS. And they're working on this. I actually think it started off with Redstone 2, but um, at least during the Redstone 2 lifetime or development cycle. I know that. And so here we are. They're going to be doing this. And other things they're doing too. If you remember in the Creators Update video, they showed off Action Center. And there's the quick control buttons, whatever you call them, where it's like Wi-Fi, volume, brightness, and all that stuff. And it was in the Action Center. And they reskinned it or, you know, updated the visual elements. So I can tell you this, that one of the things they're playing with in Windows 10 is they're actually bringing some of those buttons outside of that and giving them uh, through the taskbar. You can launch them. We'll see if that makes it in. Again, these are all kind of experimental features. And uh, I've seen them for myself firsthand. And so they're experimental and... uh, yeah uh we'll see if they make it in so there you go a couple of redstone three tips but it's like i've been saying for a while this is a much larger update another random thing that i was thinking about about uh 10 30 last night when i was trying to go to bed is whatever the hell happened to one clip in the that bundle stuff remember this was like late last or middle of last year things started to kind of show up in redstone a little bit and then they were gone uh, for those not familiar one clip is what it was originally called many years back in the Windows 8 day. And so you have apps on iOS, Android, and Windows. And if you're on Windows and you right mouse click on something, it gets copied into this app. And then that app uh, blasts it to everything else like onto your phone. So what was really nice is if you're on Windows 10 and you right mouse click on a URL, copy it, and then on your phone, you can go open that URL. It was great for sending directions. You can send photos, but I don't know. This stuff just kind of disappeared again. It makes me sad because that's a really cool feature. And Microsoft, what are you doing? Other things that came out this week, Microsoft is now blocking updates for new chips running an older OS. So if you run the new AMD Ryzen chips or KB Lake and you want to go back to Windows 7 or Windows 8, you're not going to get updates. Microsoft's now blocking that because that's what cool kids do. So this is a bit perplexing. I get why it may not work on Windows 7. Windows 7 is is an an extended lifecycle support. Uh, Windows 8 is still in mainstream support until January 9th, 2018. So mainstream support and Microsoft's like, and this is Windows 8.1. And Microsoft's like, hey, we're not going to support that. Um, Then why is it in mainstream support? What, What is mainstream support then? And I know the initial thought is like, why the hell would you buy a new laptop and throw on the older OS? So for a consumer, that doesn't make a lot of sense, but I can guarantee that there are companies who are still running Windows 7, and there probably are some running 8.1, who buy new laptops and then put an older OS on it because that's what the 10,000 machines in their environment... Actually, I know of an environment that's like 90,000 plus laptops and desktops, and they're still running Windows 7, and they have to buy new hardware, but they're just not ready to go to Windows 10 because it's a massive infrastructure upgrade. And so they buy new laptops, and then they need to downgrade them, and now Microsoft's like saying, "Ah, ah, good luck. Good freaking luck. Just update to Windows 10. That's It's a pretty bad move. I don't know. It leaves a pretty sour taste in a lot of people's mouths. Intel's probably not happy about it. Well, I don't know. Maybe Intel is happy because then it gets new people to buy. I don't know. Um, it just seems odd. Like, Microsoft's known for the enterprise support. And maybe if my the one thing that kind of goes back in my head at this point is that Microsoft just doesn't care. They don't want to dedicate the people to work on an older OS to support these newer chips when they want everyone on Windows 10. They have no comp- competition in the desktop space. Yeah, you're going to argue OS X. No, not in the enterprise, nor is Chrome OS in the enterprise. And so they want everyone on Windows 10. And so they're really just kind of like saying Windows 7, Windows 8, you know, get on the boat, sail off into the sunset. We're done with you. And everybody should be on Windows 10 beca- because they can. And uh, it just doesn't, it's just one of those things that just doesn't feel right. You know what I mean? just doesn't feel right but there you go uh microsoft's doing that stuff 
So they're, you know, giving us the ye old middle finger. All right. Uh, ooh, I clicked on things I shouldn't have. All right. So we got a lot of good questions this week. Some of them extremely relevant. Well, most of them are all extremely relevant. Uh, we're going to dive into those here. Because we're making good headway. And so the search question is a very specific thing, but it's actually pretty neat. So Merc Blue 281, it says, do you or Paul have an HD home run prime to utilize and share with your readers? Um, Silicon Dust and Microsoft have enabled viewing DRM, DRM locked live TV in the creators update. As an old time media center user looking to see if they can enable recording with this. In the meantime, it's a working solution to pushing a TV package to your Xbox One and Windows 10. Super pumped using this now. I have never used this thing. But this is, uh, I'm very intrigued by it. And I'm actually going to look into it because I could use something like this. So if anybody has an HD Home Run Prime, I, I would honestly love uh, some feedback on this stuff. I might actually buy one of these and we'll see. We'll see. Okay, uh, Tourniquet says, what happened to the Xbox One wireless display app? Is it still in beta? Is it still coming? I was wondering the impression it would be released with RS1, just like the Connect and app. I I'm not quite sure what you're referring to. If you're the Xbox One wireless display app, it's now rolled, isn't that rolled into the Xbox app? That's my understanding. Like, I can stream things from the Xbox One to my PC through the Xbox app. Um, I, maybe that's what you're referring to, but check it out. You can definitely do streaming in all that stuff. Uh, the Quantum Fro asks and this is this is the interesting one of the in, extremely interesting questions he says uh, should microsoft split the windows and devices group off given how much has been said about both pc's decline and microsoft being an enterprise company what is left for the consumers this is this is one of those interesting things so microsoft has a massive org it's a windows devices group so you have windows and we have the devices so you have windows and hardware sitting right next to each other and they i believe they used to be separate and then they married them together so the reason why I think they're not going to split them up is because independently, they're much smaller than they are as a combined org, obviously, if you split things in half. And so will they split them up? I don't think so. I, I honestly don't think so. Um, ask for what's in it for consumers. The consumer stuff is like kind of dicey too, because there's everybody's going to buy a computer. People, I, I honestly think that if Microsoft just stopped developing Windows 10 today, hell, if they just stopped developing Windows 7, I don't think many people would really be complaining. And so Windows Windows itself is in a kind of a maintenance mode of its life cycle, right? It's um it, 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 it's not a growth sector for Microsoft. They're making sure that everybody who has Windows stuff and who wants to buy Windows stuff it's still going to work great. It's going to be good, and it's going to be modern and secure. Uh but yeah, I, I don't I don't really know uh, why they would do it, mostly because it's not a growth sector. Typically, you want to break things off if they're either a not related in general, or if they're growing at such a rate that they they need a dedicated uh, corporate vi vice president and a whole team supporting that specific growth segment to make sure that the company's on track and blah 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 blah. I can ramble on about that. So will that happen? I don't think it's going to happen anymore. Uh, I, th I think we're kind of beyond that. Uh, da, 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 da. uh, good bar asks that for Paul's one plus three T reviews. I read he's considered using the Google now launcher, but decided on the stock one, uh, one plus three T interface with one plus three, three specific customizations. I'm curious if he considered using arrow launcher. If he does, I honestly, you'd have to ask Paul that one. Um, I don't, uh, Paul and I chat too much, but I, we don't really talk about launchers on Android all that much. Uh, a gizmo asks, it says, not a question, but something to talk about. Oh, he was referring to the, the Ryzen and KB Lake issue. Uh, Mr. PKI asks, he says, do you think the Xbox Scorpio specs are adequate for DVR capability or will it be completely dedicated high-end gaming machine? Is TiVo the only solution uh, looking forward? Uh, TiVo the only solution. This is a really good question. Could it do DVR? I think absolutely. Um there were some internal musings that Microsoft was going to enable DVR for everything on the Xbox One. And cable companies got really pissed at Microsoft and kind of threatened them with some bad things, I guess. And so I don't know if they're going to go down that route with the Scorpio. Is it technically capable of doing it? I mean, does it have the horsepower to do it? Absolutely. Will Microsoft enable it? I don't know. Here, there's two reasons. One, the, the cable and licensing and all that crap. 
Uh, two, Microsoft is very scared about botching the launch of this console, right? Remember when the Xbox One launched and they said, oh, it's all about TV and meta media center. And that's why they call it Xbox One. It's one device for your living room. And people kind of hated that. So I would be very surprised if we hear the word TV in, in this capacity used at all uh, during the launch of it because they're going to focus on gaming and I think that's going to be it. Uh, Habs fan asks, he says, there's been a lot of talk about Microsoft apps on Android devices. Wouldn't it just be just as advantageous to allow Android apps back on Windows devices? It definitely would make it easier decision to buy a Windows tablet. So uh, Habs fan, you are correct. Uh, Microsoft actually had this. It was called the Astoria Bridge, I believe. And it was more than just a bridge. I think it was actually an entire environment where you could run um, Android apps in the Windows phone world. And here's the problem. One person told me, and I, I can't qualify this, they said it worked too well and that Microsoft was scared that if they enabled it, nobody would ever build a Windows app again. Because why would you? If it works so well that you could just write a native Android app, have it on Windows Mobile, why would people still build for the Windows world? And that made people very scared that they would just completely go to the Google route, build that stuff, and it would actually benefit Chrome OS more than it would actually benefit Microsoft. At that, It was around that same time that they realized that Windows Phone or Windows Mobile, whatever you want to call it, was not going anywhere. And they said, eh. And so they just went to um, the iOS route. And so will they ever allow it? I don't think they will, uh, unless they completely give up. And so if they do that, that means if Microsoft allows that, it would mean they would, they've given up on the UWP app story and they're giving up on phone. So, uh, Poncelius, Poncelius, I think Microsoft has always had a problem with mobile on a global scale by mostly introducing features as US only. They also really don't have any mobile hardware. Uh, so we have the Galaxy Mobile, Galaxy as you know the, the microsoft editions is it time for nokia 6 microsoft edition to introduce the world of microsoft mobile products nokia i don't think will ever touch a microsoft mobile thing again <laughs> so the nokia of today is not really the nokia of yesterday he's asking if nokia would ever reintroduce a microsoft edition of their product um a lot of people really in that area of the world hate microsoft because of what they did even though i agree that that nokia had to do uh, da, 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 it looks it, Nokia had to move to Windows Phone or another platform because they were dying. They were on Symbian. Symbian wasn't going to work. Android is not a savior. Android is a, there's nothing wrong with Android. But look at companies like HTC and Motorola and Lenovo who went all in on Android and it didn't work out so well. It worked out well for Samsung because they had the largest budget and uh, they could chunk so much money at it and make it a success and build great hardware. But the software alone would not save it. And so Microsoft, or Nokia went with Microsoft because it made sense because Windows Phone was still young and immature at that point. There was no clear leader. There was no Samsung of the Windows world. And so Nokia wanted to become that and they did. The problem was that Microsoft didn't give uh, enough support and do enough to make Windows Mobile good enough for everyone. And so it collapsed and it, it essentially took Nokia with it and a bunch of billions of dollars from Microsoft when they bought that portion of Nokia back. So, uh, Da, da, da. He says, Peter K writes, Paul just wrote an article on how Android is the future of Windows Mobiles. What are your thoughts? <sighs> so here's the thing. Um, iOS and Android give you a better mobile Microsoft experience than uh, Windows Mobile. I, I believe that because they're getting better apps. They're higher quality apps. It's a better underlying OS. And so I actually honestly do. And Android aligns itself better to typical Windows fans because it's much more customizable. You can tinker the hell out of it. You can gut that OS if you want. You can do things. iOS is you're going to run iOS. It's the Henry Ford bottle, right? Uh, you can have any car you want as long as it's black. That is iOS. You can have any icon as, any icon shape as long as you want or any icon layout as you want as long as it's a square or a rectangle or whatever the hell. Uh, so Peter points out, says this problem with Android is that it gets slow after time. Um, I don't know. Android is not perfect. Don't get me wrong. Uh, we know the security issue. It doesn't get regular updates. Microsoft tried to make promises saying, hey, Windows Mobile won't fall into the Android trap. Although it kind of really did when you went from Windows 7, Phone 7 to Windows Phone 8, and then Windows Phone 8 to Windows Phone 10. The upgrade things didn't quite work. Um, so is Android really the new Windows Mobile? I think so. This is It's kind of hard to get definitive about it. We need to see if, at build. If Microsoft doesn't match in mobile hardware, mobile Windows 10 Mobile at build, e. That's that's the telling tale. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, Averroda asks, he says, Brad, before I ask any questions, I want to say sorry about your dog. Um, for those who aren't aware, 
Uh, I had to put my little doggy down this week. He was going to be 11 years old next month, and it really sucked. Uh, really, really sucked. And so, house is a little quiet, and um, don't really like that. I don't know if we're going to get another dog, at least not yet. But uh, we've got a toddler for now. When she grows up a little bit, well, maybe we'll think about getting another one. Because I do love dogs. I, like, I have no problem with cats. My wife's kind of allergic to cats, so we can't really go down that route. So we had a dog um, who was ironically about the size of a cat. But, uh, yeah, he did, his little body just kind of started to shut down. So we wanted him to go out with dignity. Anyways, uh, Averroda asks this question. One, with Windows 10 on ARM coming this fall and rumors that a Surface phone not entering the mix this year, what are they, uh, the odds that HP, Dell, Lenovo release Windows phone devices? What... So, okay, I, I see where you're heading with this question. Here's what's interesting to me and why I'm not going to dodge this question, but here's, here's my food for thought. We are on the cusp of learning a lot about Windows on ARM uh, and desktops and computing and mobile stuff. And so that's, that's the next big thing that might give Microsoft a boost in this mobile space. And if Dell, HP, Lenovo, and all these guys are going to go down that route, I think they're going to go down with this Windows on ARM scenario uh, I think that's maybe where they would take these things. So we got to kind of wait and see. This stuff isn't going to materialize until this fall, uh, I believe, at, at Microsoft's last saying. But hopefully we will learn something at Built. But I think I think that's where we're going to hear the next kind of big, okay, what's the strategy? And that's like the Surface Phone style stuff. I don't think Surface Phone's coming this fall. At least I haven't heard anything to indicate that. But that's the t style of device that Microsoft would like to build. And so maybe their partners will go down that route. HP obviously seems pretty gung-ho with their Elite X3. And so maybe they are moving that way as well. Uh, question two, this goes along with the phone idea. With the rumored release of Windows 10 Cloud, presumably for education, what are the odds that it will op option to run on phones as well? Uh, would it be considered more lightweight than Windows 10 Home or Pro? I'm thinking that it may be... Okay. I don't know if this is going to run on phones or not. I... So what kind of what trips me up about this, at least from what I've seen so far, and, and this is not definitive in any way, uh, Windows, this cloud, yes, it's a it's kind of a lighter weight version, right? You can only run UWP applications, but but I think underneath it's still mostly Windows 10. I don't know how much they've gutted out of it. Granted, people are going to say, well, Windows 10 Mobile is just Windows 10. Yeah, but they've gutted a lot of stuff to make it run better in those environments. So I don't know how easy it would be to just take this OS and just and just ram it down the throat of a phone like this. That being said, is it completely impossible? Probably not. I'd, I'd look to someone like Raf who might be able to actually figure out how to do that. I'm not smart enough to be able to actually do that. Um, but... I, I don't think out of the gate they're going to say, you know what, if you have a Lumia 950, you can also run Windows 10 Cloud. Yeah, I mean, that would be fun. That would be freaking amazing because that'd be a, that's like a tinkerer's dream right there. But I don't I, I don't know if they are going to enable that because of the support scenario. It'd be neat if they allowed you to do it with no warranty, no anything else, and just say, hey, here's how you do it if you want. You might break your phone and that kind of stuff. But that's a really risky road for them to go down legally. So... Uh, it'd be interesting. And then Kadupa asks, he says, Brad, do you have any idea what happened to Miracast Microsoft initiatives? They released second gen dongles and then that's uh, abandoned it. Also, what happened to the stick PC? No movement on that front. If it's like MS is starting that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So that, that's like a multi-part question. So Miracast, they did release a dongle not too long ago and it's just kind of okay. Uh, Miracast has been one of those things that sounds great and they're supposed to take on Apple AirPlay and we don't really hear honestly too much about it. I wish that it was much more pervasive and I honestly wish it worked better. Um, you probably can't see, I don't know if this will work behind me, but I actually have one plugged in here behind me. I don't know if you can see that. Well, it's, it's glare from a light, but that I actually have a Miracast dongle plugged into this thing. It's actually plugged in down there, but you can see it up there. And it doesn't work all that well. Um, unfortunately, like trying to stream any video doesn't, it, 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 it's just not reliable. Um, when I do the podcast on this setup with Paul, uh, getting stuff to that machine, I actually ran an HDMI cable that plugs into there and then snakes up behind that wall because I initially wanted to use Miracast, but it wasn't reliable enough. And um, unfortunately, I don't really know. That's actually a great question. That's a great question. Mm -mm -mm. I don't know. I don't know. And then their PC stick initiative. 
<laughs> I, th- these are very good questions. And this is why I love this stuff because I think I know a lot about what Microsoft's doing. And then somebody asks a question like this and I don't know, I haven't heard anything because there, there was like the Intel compute stick, Lenovo had one. And I don't know if they just didn't sell, if the market wasn't there or they're kind of ramping up things. They're neat little devices. You can plug a little compute stick into a, That's the breakout box for that thing. I can plug it in down there and have that machine be a whole computer. And it's a neat idea. I maybe it seems like it's more of like an enterprisey type thing where you can just buy a screen, slap it on a wall, put that in there, and use it as like a mobile advertising display. Um, I haven't really heard of many people using them in their living room because they're not going to be powerful enough to be fully a full multimedia machine because you need the encoding and decoding and that kind of stuff. Um, and so maybe that's the limitation. It's one of those ideas that's great. We have the form factor now, but that we got to wait for the chipsets to actually catch up to where those things can be powerful enough to do everything that we would need. So, um, anyways, anyways, so the insider tip of the week, this one's kind of a generic one because it's just get prepared for that creator's update thing. The reason why I say that is we don't really know when it's going to hit your machine. Unfortunately, it'd be nice if Microsoft announced dates, they were going to do this stuff, but it could really hit now between now and any time in the next six to eight months. So uh, just be prepared that if you come to your machine one day and it's taken a while to boot up and it's saying, hey, we've updated your machine and that little black screen says, hi, we haven't touched any of your files, which always kind of creeps me out. That means you're probably getting the creator's update. So just be on the lookout for that kind of stuff. So, yep. With that, guys, it has been an awesome week of Microsoft stuff with lots of events going on and I'm trying to get my noodle around it. Uh, Side note, if you're in the New York City area on the Monday... Before the event, I want to say that's the first, look in here, May 1st, yes, there's going to be a meetup, um, I'm flying in early, I know Paul's getting in early, myself, Mary Jo, Paul, I'm sure whoever else is in town for that event, uh, we'll be meeting up at our lovely home away from home, Rattle and Hum, so definitely go check that out if you're in the New York City area, uh, I'll be there, if not, if you're going to build, definitely let me know, because I'm going to be a build, um, yeah. Crazy stuff. A lot of travel coming up for me, but that's okay. That's okay. Thanks for tuning in, guys. As always, have yourselves a wonderful weekend, and I'll catch you right back here next time.